Hello, gorgeous people, and welcome to another TV Central one on one podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. This is episode 22, 2023, and the 13th of the Australian Survivor Elimination episodes, although this is the 15th elimination overall. There was no major blindside last night in the sense that the plan was to split the vote between Sean and Simon. That would ultimately send Simon home. But the good old split vote just needs one person to flip, and that is exactly what happened. Sean Hampson is the 16th person eliminated from Australian Survivor. Sean, thank you for joining me at TV Central. No worries, Aaron. Thanks for having me, mate. You know, there is a bigger question to ask first rather than about last night's Tribal Council. That question is, have you bought Sam McCartan a beer yet? Ah, the all-important question. <laughs> I Look, we we did like a little thing in uh, Jury Villa where I passed Sam on like a cart, carton of beer to say sorry and stuff like that. But, I mean, that was all sort of – that was that was a bit set up and it was good fun to do and stuff like that. I do genuinely still – you know, I still want to buy him a case of beer because that was that was the deal. I mean, I don't regret my move because with the information we had and what we'd been told by Simon, it was um, it was the safest thing, and I couldn't sort of you know risk risk my game for Sam as much as I love him. But the deal was that if I was wrong, case of beer. So I still owe him that. <laughs> Look, I, I know you've you've um, been asked this question six hundred times, but. Um... Let's talk about those two immunity idols that you just touched on. I mean, here is my perspective. And yes, I know it's from a couch, um, you know, eating a bowl of the chocolates, which is not quite the same as being there on the island. Um, I, I get the issue if you had one immunity idol. Um, you know, do you believe Haley's info or, or don't you? You then have a 50-50 chance. However, you had the opportunity to cover both bases, whether she was lying or telling the truth. You say Sam is telling the tr- truth. Um, and and George goes home, or she's lying. You play the second one uh, for yourself or Nina. By saving yourself and Nina, you gave like no opportunity at all to uncover if if Haley was telling the truth. So mm. I guess why 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 not hedge your bet both ways with with two idols? Yeah, it's it's a great point. And it's a great great question actually. But um, it's actually the first time that question has been been asked like that, and it's a really logical way to look at it. Um, we were also told um, by Simon that Nina would be getting four votes and I would be getting three votes. So we went into tribal council thinking that Nina and I were receiving the vote. Now, we also spoke about the possibility of what if they're feeding Simon the wrong information? And we Mm. thought that that wrong information would come in the form of um, who the majority of the split was going to. So Uh we thought if they were on to Simon that they would tell him four on Nina, three on Sean, when in reality it was the reverse and they were perhaps doing four on me and and three on Nina. So that was our form of hedging our bets, I guess, um, was to sort of play the idol for Nina and I. And that was our plan going into it. You know, Simon had told us where the votes were going as per our, our plan. Um, Haley had obviously given us that little tidbit. We had really no reason to believe her. I mean, she'd sort of, that conversation she had with 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 Nina was, you know, lasted about a minute, um, and Haley really hadn't given us any time of day since um, she she swapped to the other alliance at uh, merge. So we really didn't like. We were like, do we have reason to to trust Haley? Like she could easily just have been sent out to tell us to put our idol on Sam, and then it's one of us two going. So the plan the whole time was for me and Nina to play the idols for ourselves right up until I was about to play it for myself. And then Sam said, play it for me. And obviously he sort of picked up on, on something that um, I, I didn't. Um, and look, it would have been great to um, pull off the move and send George home. And it would have been a fantastic move. But in terms of with the information we had and at that time, tribal council, I absolutely don't regret playing that thing for myself because it could have easily been, any one of us and um, me and Nina bought ourselves another couple of days in the game. Yeah. It's actually, it's good having these podcasts because it gives you more information because most of the stuff we saw on air was about the Haley um, and lying or not lying, but didn't really see too much about Simon with that, with that whole split vote as well. Look, we're not talking about a, a nuclear disaster here. The world won't explode, but do, do you still kick yourself a little bit on 
uh, about that that whole um you know choosing yourself over over Sam or are you over it now? Um I I was over it and then you sort of relive it again. You go, oh, it would have been great to pull that off because it would have been an enormous move. So again, I don't I don't regret my decision, but I do wish that we pulled the move off. I I I, I don't know if that is um paradoxical yeah. or, or if it makes sense, but I really like, you know, I I spoke a lot to Mark Wales before I came out. And, you know, one thing he said, particularly with an idol and particularly late in the game, he said, just always play the move of least regret. You know, yeah. you would rather play the thing wrong for yourself um, than, than right for somebody else. Um, so, and that, that's what my thinking was. Like I'd come so far in the game and it easily, easily could have been any one of us that night. And if I played that idol for Sam and I went home that night, I mean, I would never have been able to live with that. That would have been a really hard pill to swallow. So, yeah, it didn't work out. But, you know, I, I'm not going to regret keeping myself safe. I sacrificed a lot um, to go out there for a second time. You know, time with my family and m huge um, job opportunities as well. And I, I wasn't going to let something like that un undo it. Yeah. Is it weird watching it back now? Like, because you're watching it as a viewer. Because now you get to see all of the perspectives. You get to actually see Hayley on air talking to Nina and all that sort of thing. Um, is it, is it, Oh, you know, I, I see what happened there. Um, cause you're just like a viewer now. Yeah, exactly. Right. I think that's something, cause I mean, I, I, I had, you know, an equal amount of people that said, you know, like always play the idol for yourself. You did the safest thing. And, you know, an equal amount of people said, what were you thinking? Like, why didn't you play it for Sam? And I think those are the people who forget, like what we're privy to it's it, it is really easy on the couch and um you, you see name you sorry you see Haley's confessionals where she's saying i'm ready to make a big move i'm gonna put some breadcrumbs out there i'm gonna give them the information we need <laughs> but we didn't see that out there you know <laughs> Nina had one minute conversation with Haley where she was saying if you have an idol play it for sam like that's what we had to go on and then we also had the information simon was told by george which was we're splitting the vote on sean and, and Nina. So it is really easy watching it back on the couch because you have so much more information than, than, than we have out there. Well, actually that wasn't your only, I guess, sliding doors moment in, in the show, the immunity challenge, obviously you came second to uh, Nina. So that obviously would have changed everything. Um, girls have been outstanding with the endurance challenges, haven't they? Um, was it, I guess it was just your, your body just had enough, I guess. Yeah, you know, I feel like um, being an athlete all my life, like I can absolutely admit where there was times where I maybe didn't go as hard as I could have gone. And you look back at those times and you might regret them a little bit. But with that challenge, like I, 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 I'm comfortable in the fact knowing that like I, I gave it everything I had. I couldn't stand up for five minutes afterwards because I knew that was a must win for me. So I could not go another second i think nina probably had you know another couple of minutes in her she she reckoned another two three four minutes and stuff like that and even if i did manage to scrounge another three or four seconds out um i i i couldn't have beaten her and that sort of you know gives me gives me solace in the fact that i knew that i i gave it all and i left it all out there all right so to this tribal council um you were pretty nervous being the split vote uh, knowing that someone could flip you did say at the end of the episode that you thought you might have been safe. It was on a knife edge. Did you did you not think to speak to like speak up about being the split vote and perhaps getting George to offer up Jerry or Matt as the split vote, you know, so that people would definitely vote, you know, the right way? There was just no no chance of that that happening. <laughs> so to to give you more sort of context for for that vote, um for for days and days and days and days it had been everybody wanted Simon gone so bad like you know he'd um he'd intentionally and unintentionally wronged a lot of people you know Liz was well and truly done with him as was Jerry Matt um uh, uh George as well um you know he'd he'd he hadn't come through for me and Nina a bunch of times. Like I think everybody was like, as soon as Simon doesn't win, like he's got to, he's got to go. So it was impossible 
to get anybody to to shift on that particular vote. Um, mm. Nobody was going to do anything bar Simon going home, except for Haley, um, as it turns out, because, you know, it was obviously in her interest to keep him around. So, like, I completely get her rationale, and she's such a such a clever player to sort of, you know, think about making a move like that, even though it was at my expense. Um, there was just no budging on that vote. Like, you, you know, there was the Matt vote that was being thrown around, and that was... That was a bit of um, that was a bit of a, a fake vote, but um, you know, it just uh, it just it just wasn't to be. There was there was no wiggle room on that. It was like it's splitting on you and Simon. Simon's going to go home, and nobody else wanted it any other way except for Haley, and she ended up blindsiding everyone. Yeah, look, let's mention Simon because because you brought it up. He he really does have a bit of a man crush on you. He really looks up to you. Um, I mean, we only see the edited version of the show, but. It didn't really feel that reciprocated from you. You were happy to vote him out a few times. So what actually is it about Simon that you felt that he didn't fit in with the alliance? Because I'm a little bit perplexed because it could be the editing. I actually feel sorry for Simon. Oh no, and, and you do. And like let's let's um preface this by saying like I I really, really genuinely like Simon. He is such a nice guy who means really well and he'll he'll be the first to admit about his foibles. He'll say, yeah, look, I've, I've, I've got an ego. It can be stroked really easily and I can get caught up. And, you know, when, when he gets, when he gets poked, um, you know, he can, he can bite back. Like we saw that really nasty tribal council with him and George that apparently lasted for seven hours. Like um, he was, you know, poked for days leading up for that. And he got really petty. Um, and he, you know, he admits to that and that, you know, it was his moment of weakness and it's, it's not what he's really like. Like mm. he's a really, really great, great guy. Who's a genuinely lovely bloke. Um, and he just had a really rough, rough run. Um, cause, cause, more... cause that, cause that fake, fake, uh, whole fake immunity idol thing. I mean, he, he genuinely thought it was, it was an idol, but then of course got yeah. caught, caught in the, um, that whole thing that it was a setup and he was trying to make deals and all that sort of stuff. But I think he genuinely thought it was an idol. He absolutely did. And look, we, I mean, we really knew after that swap that because he was so on the bottom of that tribe and everything that happened that we would, we could um, pull him over because I mean, we swapped and there was him, Geordie and Liz um, from the original villains. And we knew that if we could pull one of them across that we could split the votes on the other two. So we we wanted to get Simon across from the start. The the cookie idol was just like a kicker for us. Like we were trying to get him across regardless. And look, we we didn't know what it was. Simon was sure it was an idol. Haley and I deliberated. Is you know, is it a nullifier? Is it like part of like a super idol? Like you got to connect it to another piece and it becomes a super idol. We really didn't have any idea what it was, but we thought there was absolutely no harm in, in at least sort of sending it over to Flick, who needed it. Um, but look. Everybody was really upset about what happened there with Simon because they weren't sure if he was trying to trick us or not. I knew, I was pretty certain that he was genuine in thinking that that was an idol. Um, so I never had really any ill feelings towards him. At the same time, I wasn't sort of, as much as I like Simon, I wasn't, I was okay with seeing him go. I mean, my whole alliance, you know, I, I was about me this time. I was going out there selfish. I didn't care who went home just as long as it wasn't me. So I, I really didn't mind if it was Simon or or Sam going home. The only one I was really upset about was Flick because, you know, she was my number one from the start of the game and we had a really, really tight secret little um, alliance that nobody knew about, which, you know, I was I was really proud that we were able to keep that quiet for as long as we did. So she's the only one I would have, I was really, really upset to see go. With, with Simon, because p people did want to see him go, was there any blurring in their thinking about not seeing a good idea just because it was Simon? I, I actually thought his idea about Matt seemed perfect because it was hard to get rid of George. So the second best thing might have been to try to get, get rid of someone that's in his alliance and someone that will not move away from George at all. And that person is Matt. So that actually wasn't a bad idea. But it was no. obviously dismissed. Yeah, it, it was it was absolutely a, a good idea that was dismissed. Um, and it was simply because, like, he was trying to get 
um, you know, he would have needed Liz on board for that. And she, I mean, they've worked out their differences now, but at the time I've never seen anybody more done with somebody than Liz was done with Simon. <laughs> I think she was just like, there was no way she was going to vote for anybody else that night. Like she was just so ready to see him go that it just, it unfortunately was never going to happen. And, and you're absolutely right. And it's a great observation that it, it was a good opportunity, but everybody was so blinded. Mm. Look, last question. Um, look, you are a big guy. I'm guessing you, you are used to eating quite a bit. Was how how was it for you with the whole food situation? Um, did it become really taxing on you, like, or were you losing a, a lot of weight, or what was happening? It really, it really didn't bother me. It bothered me a bit last time I was out, but this time I I went in a lot heavier. Um, I went in about five kilos heavier than the first time I played, and that was um because I knew that, you know, um deep into the game I'd be sort of you know hitting a really good weight and I'd still have reserves there so the plan was to go in a bit heavier and stuff like that and it, and it really did work I mean it would be some advice for anybody going in I mean don't worry about what you look like on TV or whether you sort of look ripped or whatever just go in there a bit heavier because it pays dividends in the latter part of the game I mean I ended up still losing about 13 kilos wow. but um it came back on quick. Don't worry about that, Aaron. It did not take long at all. I think I was back up to my start weight by the time I'd left Jury Villa. Wow. And it was 10, 10 days I had in the Jury Villa and it was all back on. You just, you really go to town and you get in this primal mode where you just can't stop eating. But while I was out there, like, fortunately this time as well, like, I won a lot of food rewards. Um, and so, you know, eight pretty well but it really didn't bother me the only thing that really bothered me was was missing my family yeah well sean you were a, a big player in the game literally and strategically um just one diff different decision here and maybe two more minutes there and things would have been so much different um you were strategic but but never nasty um probably why you're a hero um we will see you on the jury um thank you for joining me at tv central thanks aaron it's a pleasure mate thanks for having me Sean Hampson, 16th eliminated from Australian Survivor. Australian Survivor, 7.30 Sunday and Monday on 10 and 10 play, down to two eps a week now. TV Central will be talking to almost every eliminated contestant. There'll be a podcast available around lunchtime the day after elimination. That's it for this episode. For all the latest news, podcasts, streaming info, guides and ratings, head to tvcentral.com.au. Until next time, I'm Aaron Ryan. And thanks again to Sean Hampson. Bye for now. Yeah.